And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm here today on a brand new video for Tutorials GS. Now today's tutorial we're going to be focusing on GIMP and how to create a splash text effect, also known as a splatter text effect, using GIMP and using several filters such as the Displace filter, such as the uh, Chrome filter, and several others in GIMP here. Now I have a sample of the text effect. Here's a sample of it. Here's our splash text. And an inter the interesting part about this effect is that if we zoom in actually, you can see that one of the filters that we use, which is called Displace, actually makes it look like the splash is coming out of the text. Because you see these holes right here in the main text layer here? That's basically what one of the filters does. I'm going to be showing you how to make the best out of your text with this um, filter and basically create this cool splash effect. Now, the first thing we need to do is go to a file, new, and create a new image. Uh, you could pick whatever dimensions you want. I'm going to pick 1920 by 1080. If you're creating a uh, YouTube thumbnail, you want to go uh, 720, 1280 by 720, I believe. Now, when you have your image created, we we'll use our text tool over here. Now, make sure that you're using somewhat of a type of, you know, pretty large font size uh, for a type of font. I suggest picking a rather bold one because if you make a very thin uh, font then the splash effect won't look realistic enough so picking a rather large and bold font will make it look a lot more realistic so we're going to go ahead and type in YouTube it's always a pretty standardly good thing to use for tutorials now if you want to align this into the center you click this little alignment tool over here go ahead and click your text and you can just click these two buttons right here and automatically align the uh, the text layer into the middle of your photo image not photo because this is not a photo alright so the next thing you want to do is right click your text layer and go to layer to image size this will basically expand your expand the text layer size to the entire image dimensions and after that you want to go ahead and create a new layer make sure it's set to transparency click OK go over to your brush tool and make sure that you have the splatter o2 brush now this is a, this is a default brush so all GIMP users should have this it's a free brush it comes included with GIMP so everyone should have it uh, you can search for it. it's probably near the bottom somewhere if you can't find it just type it in I found it by typing it in so splatter and you want to use the o2 version of it now what we're going to be doing is creating a line over the top of our text I suggest using a rather large um, brush size, one that's large enough that half of the brush size is covered by the top portion, half the top portion of the text, and the other half of the brush size is on top of the text. So when you have it set up, you just want to go and draw a line over it like so. And I think that may be a little too big on this side. Let's go ahead and redraw that. There we go. That's a little better. And after that, we're going to go ahead and come over here to our text layer. And you want to go ahead and go to edit and copy. Now the reason why we're going to copy is because we're going to need to paste this after we do the next step. So after that, go ahead and go to your splattered brush layer and go to filters. Go to alpha to logo and go to chrome. You can leave everything default, you don't need to change anything, and just click OK. After that, go ahead and create a new layer, transparency again, everything else default, click OK. And then you're going to go to edit and paste. And you can see the text layer is brought right back in. And right click that new layer that you've made and click anchor layer. After that, you're going to want to go and drag this down one so that it's underneath so that it's underneath um, this layer right here. You can delete the drop shadow uh, layer, don't really need that. And after, the, after you have that done, what you want to do is go to your text layer, which is this one right here. You can go ahead and make this in invisible for now, 
just so you can get a view of your text a little better. And you're going to right click, go to alpha to selection, then go to select, shrink. Now depending on your image dimensions, depending on your font size, this is going to vary. I'm going to make mine 4 though. I mean if your text is smaller then I mean, my text is about 300 font size right now and you know depending on the font that you have but if you're if you're using similar dimensions to me then you probably want to stick around three or four if you if your text is way bigger than this you might want to go higher if your text is way smaller than this you might want to go lower I'm gonna go ahead and pick four click OK and you know what I actually might go five I press Control Z to undo go to edit I mean select and shrink we're actually gonna go five after you have that done go to edit go to I mean that's not edit um, select again and go to feather and once again similar if you have a similar size to mine 25 30 we can go ahead and pick 30 and after that you want to go ahead and grab your uh, paint bucket tool and make sure that your background is white that should be your I mean your foreground color should be white and just go ahead and in each of these letters just go ahead and drop that white in there and as you can see we now have this cool little effect on our text now if you don't like it you can always change the settings I think my mine may have I probably shrink mine a bit too much I should have stayed with four I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I think five may be a bit too big so go ahead and alpha selection select shrink four there we go and I think my feathering was a bit too much too. I'm gonna stick with 25. All right, and then we're just gonna fill it in. You know, a lot of times with designing, you just gotta redo certain steps to whatever looks best. All right, so now that we have that done, I'm gonna go to select none. And now you can turn this layer back on. Now, next thing you want to do is you can go ahead and merge these two layers down sort of together as one. And you can delete this gray background layer if you'd like. I'm going to keep it on for now, just actually, I don't really need it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create another layer. Then click, make sure it's transparent. And go back to your brush tool and use that. And you're going to use that same splatter. You know what, I actually need a background because I can't really see my brush. So you could probably keep your gray background if you haven't done so yet. I'm just going to create a new layer and make it gray. There we go. That way I can see my brush. There we go. All right, so the next thing you want to do is make sure you have your brushes back to black. And what you want to do is create a similar brush stroke to the one that you made earlier. It doesn't have to be right on top of it, but you know, just make it similar looking. Like that, that's good. And after that, you want to go ahead and click this second layer here, the one that has your text. And the first layer here that you just created, go ahead and right click it, click edit layer attributes, and go ahead and rename this to map. Then go ahead and click your layer with text on it. Go to Filters, Map, Displace. Now make sure that both of these say Map on it. Click OK. After that, we can delete the Map layer. And now we can delete this background layer. And the next thing we want to do is add some color. So, Colors, Colorize. And you could change whatever color you'd like. I'm going to keep mine blue. Now, one thing you'll notice is that, I mean, sometimes, as you can see here, you can't even tell this is an E. Sometimes this is like a C now. 
Uh, sometimes the uh, the splash effect can be a bit too much. As you can see, ours is a bit too much. I mean, it completely destroys the E here. So just be careful with how how you make your brush strokes. If it's too far down, it could displace you know a letter or so. So I mean, obviously, be a little more careful with it. This is just for tutorial purposes though, so it'll pretty much get the same message across. Uh, just play around with how you use your splatter brush across the text, because if it goes too far down, if you put it too much over the text, this stuff could happen like that. But the same method, the same steps apply to it. You know, Just play around with your um, splatter brush to see how you want to use it. But after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and right-click this layer, click Duplicate Layer. And the next thing we're going to do is add a glow around it. So go to Filters, Alpha to Logo, and Alien Glow. I'm going to use a turquoise glow. And then grab your text layer and move it all the way to the top. And you could delete this black background layer if you don't want it. And there you go. There is your splash effect. Now, if we compare it to this one, this one obviously looks a lot better because I put more time into it. You know, I'm not, I didn't rush through it and didn't really, you know, I'm trying to make the video quick and short. I don't want to make it last so long, but as you can see for this one, the only difference I did here is I, I didn't, my splatter brush wasn't too far down. I also used all capital letters. You might want to use all capital letters because, um, Stuff like this probably won't happen, you know, your your letter may not be destroyed like it is here. But as you can see with this um, version right here, my splatter brush is only about halfway through the text right here. Over here we can see it's past the halfway mark, it's way down here. So just make sure that when you're using your splatter brush that it's not too far down or something like this could happen. But the same with the other, all the other steps that I explained basically apply to it. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully you know you like this sort of text effect. You know, it's something new and fresh. You know, it's not like an old text effect. It's not just like a regular text effect where you add a little you know glow or a little outline. You know, this is a cool new thing that you could use for your designs. If you have any other questions on you know any of these steps that we just did or have any other have run into any problems that you may run into, uh, definitely leave the questions in the comments and I'll try to do my best to help you out with any problems you have. Um, I know there's a few problems that you may run into because GIMP's not perfect. So just let me know in the comments, guys. Thanks. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours, depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too. Really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.